find this very daunting because to talk about science and mathematics in 15 minutes is <laughs> very, very difficult. But it reminded me of two, um, two phrases or two things that I came across. Well, three actually. Listening to uh, Medina. Yes, listening to Adina reminded me of the third one. How much is said in so few words, poetry? And how, with five symbols, equal MC squared covered almost the whole universe? I say almost because we don't know if it still applies elsewhere in the universe. So poetry, Einstein's formula, and um, this little one that I came across, I don't know how true it is. It's about Hemingway being challenged to write a short story, very, very short story. <laughs> and this was what he came up with. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. Yeah. It's a true story. That yeah, is true. It is true. Okay. So, following um, Michael, our first speaker this afternoon, this morning, <clears throat> I picked up on what he mentioned about um, Korzybski's experience. And in his first world war, Korzybski was an officer in the first world war. And he just wondered, how come we human beings were so advanced technologically and then behave so badly? You know, in general, not all of us, we're behaving nicely here. <laughs> but in general, we're behaving so badly. And he wondered about that. And just wondering about that, he did about 12 years of explorations trying to figure out what it is about science and mathematics that makes these two fields so successful while our politics or general behavior was so bad. Well, the main thing he came up with in regards to science and mathematics, that science, both science and mathematics are about relationships. And we live in a world of relationships. So the main thesis, or one of the main theses of general semantics is that if we study and apply the principles and the methods and approaches of science and mathematics, we can apply them to our everyday living. And the second um, main fundamental principle of general semantics, consciousness of abstracting. Awareness that in anything we think, imagine, say, feel, do, we have not included all. It's so simple, like Einstein's formula, but so profound because it covers everything we do or think, anything we imagine. These what do you call them? Placards, handouts, <laughs> what I prefer to call them, hands-on, that you see there. I hope you, each of you has one, or <laughs> one of each one set. These are the culmination of um, over 50, 60 years of thinking general semantics, writing about general semantics. I don't like the word teaching general semantics because I, I can't teach nobody from my perspective, can teach general semantics. You can talk about general semantics and hope others will teach themselves. Yeah? It's a long time that I've been pursuing that, and I hope that you will treat them nicely because it took a lot of, lot of work to do that. In this one, which you have, um, ben Hawk, the Institute's um, webmaster, and Jackie, Ru Jackie Rudig, our treasurer, called it the chalice. Yeah? So I think that's a nice name, the chalice. And on this you'll find many terms, principles of general semantics, science, and mathematics. Because in, in any field, 
If you want to be a doctor, you have to learn medical terms. If you want to do um, politics, you have to learn political terms. If you're in doing law, legal terms. So it's difficult to do general semantics and just use the same words that we use in everyday situation. Because general semantics is thinking about our thinking and we need different terms. So some of these terms you may find that it's not familiar to you, but if you pursue them and <coughs> explore, then you may get some ideas of what general semantics is about. And it's important to mention that from my experience, every general semantics principle can be experienced. Because it can warn us that if we just talk about it, we're not likely to gain much from it. We have to practice. We have to start thinking differently. And thinking differently is thinking about how we're thinking. And if you notice, this is my um, preparation. Because in, in trying to think how to pursue this in 15 minutes, this vast topic, I had to change my ideas several times. So this is the last one I came up with this morning. <laughs> So, in terms of generalizations of the principles of science and mathematics, let's start with the notion of the, the variable. Right? The, variable is, is the, the, the variable is defined as a symbol that can represent any one of a set of values. Okay? Any one of a set of values. So you can think of anything you experience, anything any meanings you give to anything, your life, yourself, you can think of that as variables. And the feeling you have about something or someone, the meanings you give can be considered as the value that you have given to the variable that they are. Think of words. You can think of words as semantic variables. And this morning, you had a good example of that with, um, who was it, the, the restroom? The yeah. long? Yeah, John. John, yes. The long discussion we had, long, yeah. long is a variable, let's call it. <laughs> Relatively long discussion we had on restrooms gives you an idea of that we, each one of us, give our own value to whatever he said. The thoughts that came up, what you imagine, what you said, these can be considered values you have given to the variable. I hope that is clear enough for you to think of anything that you do as a variable, and what you make of it is the value that you are given. Any question on that? Just a quick question. Is it clear? You are a variable. Right? What you make of your life, what you do with your life, is the value that you're giving to yourself as a variable. My name is Milton Dawes, but I'm not the same person, organism, that I was when I was two. I don't want to shock you, I'm 81 years old. Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> and I've often suggested that one of the ways we promote general semantics is to remind how much stress you can manage, how much stress you can avoid by studying general semantics and practicing general semantics. Stress ages us. So if we can better manage stress, we keep being younger, longer. So let's go to, um, if, well, you don't have it here, but I just mentioned, start with the notion of the variable. Right? Words are semantic variables, meanings we give, ideas we have, all these can be considered variables. Okay? So I hope the idea of variable is clear. 
because you can apply it to any situation that you're in. When we have arguments, controversies, it's related to the factor that each person is given their value to what they heard or read and not being conscious of abstracting, not being aware of what they left out, they forgot that the other person has their value. So each one of us give our values to whatever situation we are in. If you, if we went around the room and asked this person, what do you think of this morning session? What do you think of the talk on Friday night? What do you think of the talk from yesterday? you'll find that each person has their own ways of talking about this. Each person would have given their own meaning to the variable of those events. So is the idea of the variable clear? You can, you, can you think of ways to apply it? Because in the seminars we used to have, this is like a two-hour program just on the variable. Now, if you think of functions, you can think of functions as a relationship between variables. So, for instance, your health is a variable. Think of your health as a variable. So, in terms of function, let's see how much you can apply this notion of functions and variables. What is your health a function of? Think of function as dependent on. Remember, this is not mathematics. It's application of mathematical ideas. What is your health a function of? Response. Yeah. Food. Yeah. Rest. Yeah. Exercise. Mm -hmm. Stress. Mm -hmm. Stress. Managing stress, yes. Less stress, more likely to be healthier. Blood supply, oxygen supply. Yes. Mm -hmm. Glucose supply. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. So you see it's how easy it is to apply these principles. And every one of these principles is something you can apply and experience. Yeah? So the next time you're in some big controversy, remember that you are giving your value to the variable and how you approach the person or the situation depends on the value that you're giving to the variable and it's a function of your thinking. How you see a situation is a function of how you're thinking about it, how you're feeling about it. And if you're conscious of how you're doing what you're doing, then you realize that there's no need for any kind of controversy or argumentation. You simply realize that this person has another way of looking. I call it another point of viewing to get the idea of acti activity. Not a point of view, a point of viewing. A way of looking at something. And we each bring to our situations that we are in our way of looking at the situation. And if you imagine, for instance, that you were to draw a graph of your movement from the time you were born till now, right? imagine graphing that. Each one of us would have a different pattern. Right? So it's impossible for us to see and think and feel the same way as another. Each one of us will see our own way think our own way, feel our own way, because we have had different experiences, we have, we have been to different places, we have heard different things, we have read different books, and we have given different meanings. So it's difficult for us to agree, but we can agree that we each have our own point of view in. Let's think of the calculus. Because can mentioned that um, the calculus was a very important part of developing general semantics. 
a definition of the calculus, which I like very much, is this one. The study of a continuous function by following its development through indefinitely small steps. Got that? You can translate that to looking at things very, very closely. <laughs> looking at situations very, very closely. Thinking about how you're thinking very closely. And you'll find it a nice game to play. You, when an idea comes up, think about that idea and think about how you're thinking about that idea. In, at seminars um, and talking about the calculus, I have people playing frisbee. Because in playing frisbee and observing each other, you can get a feel of variables, functions, and the calculus. Anyone here play frisbee? Okay. So what are some of the variables? She has. Eh? She has played frisbee. Okay. So what are some of the variables involved? Think of variables as factors you can change to make a difference. Yeah. Well, in, in Frisbee, where I play it, um, we have a term called bispinually ambidextrous. <laughs> that means, um, you know, the Frisbee spinning in a certain direction. It can be clockwise, counterclockwise. We also have a phrase called bisidually ambidextrous. Z is the word for spin. There's the, the rate of spin, of course, the direction of spin, whether it's right side up or upside down, um, whether you can actually control it, whether it's going upside down. And then, of course, there's just the regular things you have on an airplane, the pitch, the yaw, the roll. Yeah. There are terms like hyzer for how <coughs> it's going this way or that way, and what the wind is like. <laughs> Any other variables you can think of in terms of yes. they've already been thought of. <laughs> okay. well. The size of the frisbee. Yes. Very good. Yes. 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 Yeah. The mood of the thrower. Yeah. I, I never I when I learned to play frisbee, I somehow found it more fun. <coughs> to throw it at an angle, and if I tilt it this way, it will go one way. If I tilt it that way, it will go another way. And I find great fun in, in doing that. So again, this is something that, remember, it's not about playing frisbee. It's about showing you an, an example of the variable and functions and calculus. Because if you want to teach someone to play frisbee, you could teach them in five minutes. It's relatively easy if you apply the calculus, function, and variables. <clears throat> because if, if, for instance, a person is throwing a frisbee and their goal is to get it down there, right, then they have to be aware, very, very close awareness of just that moment when they're letting go of the frisbee. Just that instant. You know? Because if you let it go here, dependent on other variables, it will go there. But if you let it go here, it's not going to go there unless you put a big curve on it. The idea? So the study of a continuous function by watching closely. Study of a continuous function, which is our living, by observing ourselves, what we're doing, how we're thinking, how we're feeling closely. Yeah. When I first read Science and Sanity, I came across a chapter on the calculus. <clears throat> I just couldn't figure because my mathematics ended formally at high school. I learned most of my math 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 mathematics from Science and Sanity by studying and doing the little exercise causing to get had in Science and Sanity. So I wondered, how is it that um, the calculus, what does it have to do with, with 
anything but mathematics. Because eh? in high school you learn to do differentiation and integration and just numbers. Have nothing to do with anything else, just the numbers. And for about two weeks I was trying to figure out how could calculus be applied to life. And then one day I was parking the car in a garage. I live in a high rise in Montreal. And there's an underground garage. And I was parking the car. And I, you know what you do when you park, right? You're looking here, you're looking there, you're looking behind. You're seeing the, the car, the front of the car is going that way, the back is going that way. You're watching closely what you're doing. And at that moment, I got a feel of what the calculus was about. Eh? I recognized that I was studying the continuous function, which was trying to park the car without hitting a column or hitting another car. I was watching that very closely. And the function was how to park the car without damage. Eh? The variables were where the car was situated, and so on. And at that moment, I got a feel of the calculus. And I developed that. Two minutes? I developed that and applied it to many, many situations. I applied it to music, for instance, in seminars we used to have. You play a bit of music, and you have lyrics, melody, um, the orchestration, instruments, and so on. And you can study that piece of music very closely and come out of it having a better feel of that music by studying it very closely. So I just stopped there because uh, it's impossible really to do anything much more <laughs> on science and mathematics. But you can, um, just some short questions because Marty said I had two minutes more, so. No, we're going to do questions at the end. Hmm? We do questions at the end. <laughs> yeah, so thank okay. you. I appreciate it. Okay.